All right, uh, an emergency press conference has come to the burning leaf because happy Valentine's Day, Russo. Tyler Toffoli is a Calgary flame. Um, there was rumblings last couple weeks that Tyler Toffoli had a lot of interest and in one of the teams being at the, uh, the Calgary Flames. And we put in our notes last week, guys. Like, I, I see it right now, Russo. You put uh, Tyler Toffoli, believe Calgary Flame. He's a Calgary Flame a week later. So you dissect the trade first because you're the Flames guy on the podcast. And, uh, yeah, go ahead, Russo. Uh, yeah, so Brad Tree Living finally makes an in-season trade um that gets his team a top six forward um and a pretty damn good one in Tyler Foley. Uh this broke earlier about what a couple hours ago. Um Elliot Friedman we talked about it last week when I when I said hey like there's a chance Tyler Tofoley's gonna be a Calgary Flamin. And Friedman Larry said this like not even a week ago. It was on Wednesday where he said oh by the deadline I think Tofoley will be a flame and then it started coming out that the Kings were interested. There was like multiple teams interested. And I think that said to Bradshaw Living, okay, we need to get this done sooner rather than later. It is now Monday. Bradshaw Living lands Tyler Toffoli for, um, I guess we'll do the package first. Um, it was a first round pick in 2022, which was always probably going to be a thing considering his term. Mm-hmm. Um, a fifth round pick in 2024. The first round pick is top 10 protected. It's kind of a thing now. I guess he's kind of learned from the Hamannick trade. Um Emil Heineman, who was acquired last year for Sam Bennett, which is actually pretty funny that he's going over. And Tyler Pitlick goes over as basically a cap dump just to keep the Flames cap compliant. Um, first reactions to the trade, um, I absolutely love it. Um, I don't think the Flames gave up too much here. A first-round pick, again, this guy has term. He had two and a half years of Tyler Toffoli. Um, so a first is going to be worth it because, you know, whoever they pick at, wherever they'd be in the draft, unless it's top 10, probably isn't going to make an impact for two years anyway, or doesn't make the team for two years anyway. Um, Emil Heineman, meh, he's an okay prospect. He was probably ranked around the 10th. He was probably around the 10th best prospect for the Flames. Again, they got him for Bennett last year, so it's not like this guy they took. They were able just to basically get this guy and flip him. Um, a fifth-round pick's a fifth-round pick. And Tyler Pitlick going in this deal, I think, is hilarious because – We know they needed to make um, the cap work. And before, um, I think it was Friedman said, oh, it's going to be Heinemann going. There was a lot of, or sorry, not Heinemann, uh, Pitlick. There was a debate going on, okay, who's going to go? Because there's not a lot of flames outside of their big ticket guys that actually make a lot of money. Um, So obviously, Gajaro, Lindholm, Kachuk, none of those guys are going. Manji, Apani, Backwood, Coleman, none of those guys are going. Monahan, Richie, Richie doesn't make enough. Monahan's not going to wave to go to Montreal. And Lucic, Rezichka, Lewis, none of those guys were going. So the de facto was Dylan Dubé. That's who I at least thought was going to go. He makes a fair bit of money. He's young enough where the Habs could maybe be able to rebuild him, yada, yada, yada. And it comes out, it's Tyler Pitlick I thought was hilarious because now you keep your entire roster intact for a guy who hasn't played in a few months and makes 1.8 million and he only had two assists on the year. It's pretty funny that he's the guy that's on the way out to make the cap work. Um, and now you take Pitlick out. So he's no longer an option. And now you bring in Toffoli who probably pushes Brett Ritchie out of the lineup. So addition by subtraction is the best part about this deal. In my opinion, that Richie's probably coming out or he's pushed down the lineup. He's not going to be playing with Monahan and Dubé. Um, where do I think Toffoli is going to play? I think he's going to start alongside Monahan and Dubé. Reason being, the top two lines have been so good recently, especially the Manji, Apani, Back, and Coleman line. And you're obviously not breaking up that top line, who's been one of, if not the league's best line this year. Um, so I think he's going to start with Monahan and Dubé. They did play together in Ottawa, Monahan and Toffoli. So I think, hey, he can. They can start him there, and then. You can always mix it up. You can throw him on that second line. Hey, if the first line starts to go stale, you can throw it to fully in the top line. Now you have now your three lines deep, which is going to make things so much better for the Flames. Um, they should be able to have three lines that can score now. Dubé and Monaghan's shooting percentages are in the trash right now. So hopefully those regress a little bit to the mean. You bring him to Foley, who's a noted goal scorer. He scored 28 goals last year in a shortened season. This is a guy that can score goals. Oh, yeah. And he's played under Daryl Sutter. So he knows exactly what he's going to know exactly what to get. He knows exactly what he's going to expect from Sutter. And Sutter knows exactly what he's going to expect from Tyler Foley. 
Um, I believe this is an awesome match. I think um, the centerman would have been the most ideal, but obviously the centers that are on the market, like Claude Giroux, like potentially Joe Pavelski, like potentially Jared McCann, those were going to be harder deals to make. Um, to Foley, they get it done, what, a month and a half before the deadline? You get this done now. To Foley comes in. He still has half a season as a Calgary Flame here. I think it's a, I think it's a really, really good deal. You didn't give up any of your top prospects. You didn't give up Pelche. You didn't give up Coronado. You didn't give up Wolf. You didn't give up Zeri. You didn't give up Jeremy Poirier. You didn't give up Rory Curtins. Karen, sorry, Rory Karens. You did a really good job in this deal. Big ups to Brad Tree Living. I've given him a lot of flack over the past three years. Um, he finally comes through. He said it today. Um, the team that's done his their job, it's time that I did mine. About damn time. Tyler Toffoli, welcome to Calgary. I think it's going to be a great fit. Um, they've won six in a row. They're seemingly playing their best hockey of the year. Jacob Markstrom is the NHL's first star of the week. He's playing his best hockey. Um, and now you add in Tyler Toffoli. And you didn't take back Ben Sherratt. Um, I think it's an it's absolute still on the win. Table. And that's not, what I mean. not, <laughs> not with the Flames cap situation. I don't, also, I, too, like you said the fit. Just add in another one of those former Vancouver Canucks. Yeah. <laughs> another, How many now? It, how many? It, so it's Markstrom, Tanev, Toffoli. They had Levo last year, and they had uh, Louis Domingue last year. Right. So just just keep bringing them in. It's working. It's working. Keep bringing them and in. Hey, if we can get Connor Garland, that'd be dope too. I've seen two on Twitter. Like he's friends with like everybody. Like even Lucic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like the fit there. They played together. Just perfect. Like everybody on that team fits. And yeah. then too, like you said, with the. The Flames are three lines deep now. They don't even need a fourth line. Those are three solid lines. And, you know, because you mentioned the fourth line, the fourth line's been solid. Ever since Adam Rizicka came up um, to the team when they called him up, he's been playing really well. He had two points last game. He's really solidified that fourth line um, center spot over a guy like Brad Richardson. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, I think it's such a, it's a perfect, perfect fit. Would have I rather the Flames gone and got to Foley a year ago in free agency? Yeah, of course, or a year and a half ago, whenever it was. Mm-hmm. Of course, you didn't have to give up assets for him. But bring, bringing him in now when you got, like, still 40-some games left, pretty good move in my opinion. And you just won, like I said, six in a row. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really and good fit. too, like, it's almost insurance for next year because, like, mm-hmm. the Flames are going to have a bit of a cap crunch with oh, your yeah. two mm-hmm. top forwards needing new contracts. And Gaudreau is a UFA. Um, Kachuk is an RFA. And Mangiapane as well is an RFA. And you can't bring back all three. Uh, it gives you insurance. Mm-hmm. Like, Toffoli is here next year. And he's here the year after. Yeah. And, I don't know, Mangiapane might ask for some stupid number that's going to be based off of 30 games. And maybe the Flames could just go, okay, well, we'll use the money elsewhere. And then Toffoli just steps in, replaces that. You don't lose much off the roster. It gives them a lot of flexibility. Yeah. yeah. And I think, Like I said, sorry, go ahead. Like lesser on bringing Toffoli, who is a fantastic fit or seems like he will be. He should be. It's the flexibility that it gives them. Could he be, uh, he could even be first line, although probably don't touch that. He could be second or third line, and you could just interchange him in and out, uh, power play, whether he's on the first unit or second unit, who knows? It's just it's extra depth. There's three lines. If he plays the way that he played in L.A. and played in the playoffs for Montreal. Mm-hmm. Well, Frank, even during the regular season last year for Montreal. Or in the regular season, and then he moves to that style that, that the Flames are playing. And, like, Thomas, we played them a week ago. Man, I don't want to play that team in the playoffs. Let alone and now with, you have, and now let alone you have with a legit Foley goal scorer. <laughs> like that's a in the West. I think there might be three teams at the top: Colorado, Vegas, and I think the third is Calgary. I'd make the argument that's, right now until Vegas gets fully healthy. I think the Flames can take Vegas 
all day long I was with this lineup. Thinking that as well. Until they like, get healthy and they haven't been healthy all year. They're at you the don't, top. Like, yeah. Like Jack Eichel's gonna come back and like he'll be really good, but it might take him some time to mm-hmm. like really get into game shape. There's a guy that hasn't played in almost a calendar year. Colorado is gonna almost be the top like, as hell in the West. It's obviously. almost two two and a half years since he meaningfully played. <laughs> yeah. That's it has crazy. Been. Yeah, so like I, I don't know. There, this makes them a really tough out. I think they're clearly better than the Oilers. You know, I think they're. I think the the Flames' depth is better than the Oilers' depth, even after they got Kane. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can make the argument they're the best team in the Pacific, which is crazy. I, I was listening to our show from the beginning of the year and how I was just trashing this team, and now we're sitting here. They just bought it. They just bought a player, at a really good one too. And yeah, it's it's gonna be really fun. He should be in the lineup tomorrow against Columbus. If not, he'll be in Wednesday. I forget who they play on Wednesday. It might be no, they play Seattle on Saturday because that's a Geo's return. Let me just check real quick who they play on well, two and uh, like Anaheim. Anaheim, a divisional matchup, which would be huge. Right. Like the experience on this team too. The defense doesn't have as much and. No. I'm looking at it. Nobody's hurt on that defense, right? It's Flames have been healthy. Hannafin, Anderson, yeah. Chillington, yep. Tanev, Zadorov, Branson. Yep. Okay, so maybe and you so, could add a defenseman there. Yeah, I think but, the, the, the quite obvious move would be to replace Good Branson. Um, Zadorov, all the credit to him, he's been playing really, really well as of late. He does that's a one thing. Player. That's a oh, playoff yeah. player. Dude, when the Flames played Colorado a couple years ago, he was like a, he was a menace. He was just taking guys out left, right, and center. And he's playing under Sutter, which is, like, really, I think, upped his game. That hit on Kasha. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's, the, that, that's the biggest yeah. hit I've seen. I've seen. That's the biggest hit I've seen in a while. Um, There's a yeah, lot of experience, especially up front. Yeah. yeah, like Trevor Lewis is a guy that was on that L.A. team that won. Lucic was, on, Lucic was on the Kings when he, they didn't win, but he was on the Bruins. Coleman the last um, two years. Coleman, like Toffoli Coleman's in there. there too. Yep, and then even on the back end, like Zadorov's been through the ringer in the playoffs. Tanev's been, you know, I don't know how good Vancouver, I don't really remember how good Vancouver was when Tanev was like earlier. I don't think they were where they were. Like, he was a part when, of the bubble team, was he not? Yes, he was there, but like, I don't think he, I remember he was in the 2015 playoffs. So that might have been his first run, like when the Flames played them. But there's experience. And like, and honestly, Sutter, there's a lot of similarities between this team and the 04 team. There really is. They got a really good top line. Their depth is okay. It's solid. And they got a stud goalie. There's a lot they're, of similarities. They're a team that I think is built to win in the playoffs. Only time. I'm time. looking at this. Like, that's kind of terrifying. The it's way they only... play, the heavy style they play, and the scoring touch that they'll and have. They play, and they play fast. Like, I don't think people realize how quick of a game they play. It might have not have been um, – they might not have shown it against the Leafs because they didn't the kind of get outplayed. But like, my, my favorite thing, like, with that uh, is – like, my dad, for example, Tavares is so slow. Tavares isn't the fastest player, but the players around him are, like, the fastest in the league. So when you have that comparison, yes, he looks slow. And it's the same well, I was thing. Gonna, like, I the Leafs are a really fast about, team. So Yeah, and I was going to talk about Toffoli's foot speed. Now that you brought foot speed, he's not the fastest guy out there. But um, he knows how to create offense without being the fastest guy on the ice, Yeah, which is going to be a massive thing. Like, like For this team, they need guys to create more offense on their own, and Toffoli can do that in spades. And the, and they think even the big he's a right handed shot. The Flames don't have many of those. Mm-hmm. In their top six, they only got one in Lindholm. They and, and they he's have center. He's not even on the wing. Yeah, and they only like have expect. now and they only have one guy in their bottom six, and that's Trevor Lewis. So to bring in another right handed shot, he's probably going to help power play. I mean, you can probably swap out him and Monahan, and it probably gets better. Um, but he's going to be on that second unit, which <laughs> it's going to create some da- it's going to create some chaos. But yeah, it's this is a it's a pretty good day, I would say. I love the I love the trade. Only time will tell for Montreal in terms of their futures. Yeah, I didn't think they got back nearly enough 
than they should have for a guy that has term. I really don't. Yeah. I always like the uh, – like, why is there a fifth in here? Really? Was that the deal breaker? Did you guys and argue it's not even over like, the fifth? And it's not even from this year. It's, from, it's in 2024. Yeah, it's like, like two who, years from now. Who are you scouting right now? <laughs> What 16, 17 year old is like the not even like 15. the deal breaker in this? Like, what you, you really have a guy you want in 2024, right? I mean, like lottery picks, but really, a fifth, really, the yeah. fifths are the like Tyler Pitt, like for a fifth, yeah, and the flames get like that kind of thing, not him. the yeah. not in this type of a deal where you're like the fifth, but yeah. No, but um, I look at this as an absolute win. I think Bradshaw Living did a great job. I don't necessarily think he's finished. I will see on deadline day. I still think he's going to go out and maybe get a couple depth guys, maybe a depth forward depth defenseman, because knock on wood, the Flames have been extremely healthy this year outside of Noah Hannafin missed one game and then obviously COVID, but they've been an extremely healthy team. They haven't had any injuries God forbid something happens, they're probably going to need a guy or two to step in. Toffoli does help with that, especially if someone in your top six gets injured. Mm-hmm. There's another guy you can toss in. So um, maybe you go out. This is where I would condone go get a go to go get a, a depth defenseman, Brad. Now would be the time. <laughs> Closer to the deadline. Hey, go back to Montreal. Go get Brett Kulak from them. That'd be pretty nice. Um, but maybe at bringing in a couple depth guys, maybe you give Matthew Phillips a shot at some point. Who knows? But with the way the team's going right now, um, and adding him to Foley, it's going to be nuts. Um, so basically, the lineup I would probably say the least one I would run with. I would start with uh, Joe Monahan. Not <laughs> Monahan. I'm so used to saying that. Gaudreau, Lindholm, Kachuk would obviously is going to stay as a top line. Manji Apani back when Coleman. I would probably stick with that line for now, just because of how well they're playing. Dubé, Monahan, Toffoli probably slots in right there pretty nicely. And then, um, you know, take your pick. Lucic, Rizicka, Trevor Lewis is probably going to stay there, but I'd probably bring in Matthew Phillips at some point um, or Jacob Pelche because he's playing really well down the AHL. But I did see someone say, um, watch, it's going to be Dubé who comes out and Richie stays in. I'm, I'll lose it if that's what happens. But I, it wouldn't even surprise me. Brett, Brett, Daryl Sutter seems to love Brett Richie. So who knows? But um Please don't do that, Daryl. Just just tell Brett to kindly fuck off and we'll be okay. In so. all fairness, like plays that style. He was good for Dallas in the playoffs. Yeah, Brett Ritchie also doesn't have a single point this year. <laughs> he doesn't? He doesn't oh. have, he's played like twenty five games. He doesn't even have a point. Even Nick has more points. Damn. Yeah. Nick's better. Like Nick's better yeah. than him. Brett just kind of skates around and hits guys. That line was awful, like the, especially against the Leafs. Like every time that Dubé, Monahan, Richie line was out there, I'm like, oh my, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, we're gonna get scored on. But then, but like, like I said, adding to Foley there probably makes things a lot better. So, uh, yeah, I'm super, super excited. We're gonna try and get like a full length episode, I think, this week. Um, but we just wanted to put this out there because it's a pretty major thing to happen, especially just in the middle of the day. We didn't really want to wait till Friday or whenever we're planning on posting. No, not we, you. <laughs> yeah, me. I, I didn't want to wait. So I think this is a, uh, it's awesome. We're going to try and do this more, like maybe some quick kind of things if all of us have the time. Um, but no, this is very exciting news. Can't wait for, I hope he plays tomorrow. He's supposed to be arriving in Calgary at some point later today. So um, hopefully um we see him in the line tomorrow if not he'll be in wednesday i'd imagine he's probably gonna be rocking number 73 because 73 is available um but yeah that's i don't know do you guys have anything quickly left yeah one quick thing since we did this for you and the flames when the least trade a fourth for justin brown thomas can we like jump on here for 20 minutes we're diagnosing that yeah perfect great and when they have brett and when they have nick ritchie going back with three hundred thousand retained or whatever it is Still what, a topic what of things? discussion. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. Do you guys have anything quick left to add, or is that kind of it for this? No. The flames are fucking terrifying. Good. Um, yeah. So, that's uh, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Just uh, one again, quickly. Again, thanks for listening in. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, at the Burning Leaf Pod. This is probably going to go on our YouTube channel as well. Mm-hmm. At the Burning Leaf Pod. Um, Tyler Tafoli's Calgary Flame. It's going to be a great week. We'll see you guys later.